Yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Cabinet. Uh, today I'm Peter Fox, Leader of the Council. I welcome anybody who may be watching in from uh, home. Um, can I ask Cabinet colleagues to introduce themselves, please? Phil Murphy, Cabinet Member for Resources. Brian Jones, Cabinet Member for County Operations. Paul Jordan, Cabinet Member for Governance. Richard John, Cabinet Member for Children and Young People. Sarah Jones, Cabinet Member for Social Justice and Community Development. Hello, Penny Jones, Cabinet Member for Social Services, Health and Well and Safeguarding. Dimitri, would you like to? Uh, Councillor Dimitri Petruni, Leader of the Labour Group. Yeah. Okay, thank you and uh, welcome officers as well. If any of you uh, contribute, if you perhaps introduce yourselves uh, at that point, that would be great. Um, apologies for absence, uh, obviously Bob Greenland, Bob will probably watching in today, he is still, uh, as you know, um, receiving treatment for his, uh, his illness, but uh, you know, hopefully uh, in, in due course he will be back with us in full strength. Um, okay, second item, declarations of interest. Anybody? <coughs> Got anything? No. no. If you find one, as usual, please uh, declare verbally and fill in the appropriate performer. Okay, that takes us straight into the only two uh, items today, so it shouldn't be too long a meeting. No, so I won't uh, try to. I won't guess. No, it could take longer than we think. Okay, so we're going to item three, and the first one is the play action plan and play sufficiency assessment. Uh, Councillor Sarah Jones. Um, yeah, so the report that you've got today, um, the purpose of which is to approve the play action plan. So the play action plan for 1920 is our annual plan. So we've got a statutory requirement to produce this under the Welsh Government guidance, uh, Wales, a play friendly country. So in approving that plan itself, we're also going to be approving the play sufficiency assessment. So that's been informed or has helped inform the actions that are within the plan. And that assessment, again, is a duty that we're required to undertake as the local authority um, every three years. So obviously the last one was in 2016. And then the final recommendation in the report is to, um, to mandate the subgroup um, to progress the actions under the strategy. So as is outlined in, in section 3.9 of this report, I know that all of us as a cabinet uh, are absolutely um, uh, aware of the important role that play can have on the lives of our children and young people. And I know myself from first hand experience, I've seen through the schemes and projects such as the summer play scheme, how important our role can be in, in supporting this agenda. We know that having time and space to play gives children the opportunity to, to meet and socialise with their friends. It helps keep them physically active and it's giving them the freedom to choose what they want to do. And we also know directly from the children themselves. So we've undertaken um, work with them and we've had feedback from the children um, themselves about the importance of play and how important that is in terms of linking it to the quality of their local environment. So again, um, this touches on all of our portfolios in some respect. And I think, again, it's something that's so important to us all individually as well as Cabinet collectively. Um, what we've got in front of us today helps contribute towards both our corporate plan um, and also our social justice strategy goals in terms of giving children and young people the best possible start in life. It helps to address inequalities and it helps to develop those child friendly communities that we're so keen to see. Um, so in terms of proposed action areas and some of the, the detail within the reports that you've got in front of you, I think it's important to note that what we're trying to do here is to continue to prioritise freely chosen play. It's not an attempt to duplicate some of the services and work that we already do under the wider leisure um, and recreational planning process. And I wanted to just pick up on some of the main highlights and some of the successes that, um, that Mike and Matthew and their teams have been working on. Um, some of those include the excellent progress that we've achieved in terms of gaining intelligence and feedback from children and their views. So I know, for example, in Council of Trunies Ward um, and in Thornwell, we've done play assessment with schools. And that information has been really helpful in helping us understand um, the importance of play and where we should be directing our efforts. We've also seen some really um, positive and well attended play, open play access schemes during the summer. So those are taking place at eight community venues and they'll continue again this summer. Um, and I think at this point, it's really important to acknowledge the support of our partners in delivering um, this programme. So particularly the town and community councils that um, provide financial support to those schemes. So I think that's a really important recognition of their importance. Um, I'm really keen and as a cabinet member, I've been keen to progress the opportunities under the school holiday enrichment programme. And Mike's progressed this and we've been successful in receiving funding from Welsh Government to run those programmes this summer. And that helped tackle holiday hunger. 
and again link into our food poverty um, challenges that we have and where we want to try and direct our support. And another success I just wanted to pick up on, which again I know members will be involved or be aware of, is the Monmouthshire Games. So I don't know if any of you have been along to those, I'm sure many of you have. And again, they deliver really fantastic opportunities for our young people. And we've seen some real success in terms of the numbers of young people involved. <coughs> So in terms of the action plan itself uh, and what we're being asked to recommend, you'll see, and I won't go through them all, but in section 3.16, there are six key areas which we'll aim to focus on. Um, and just to say that this report, um, this plan has been to CYP committee and actually think, you know, there's a very good um, pricey of the comments from the committee at the back of this report. And again, it's a really valuable, um, you know, opportunity to engage with that committee and ongoing. I know CYP and the committee will have um, a role to play in terms of scrutinising and monitoring our progress. So quite simply then, I just commend the report to you and the assessment. And um, I'd just like to thank Mike Moran and, and Matthew for all the work that they've done. Matthew's here today. And just again, to reiterate our thanks to the town and community councils that support us directly in relation to some of the programmes we run. I think it's, it's such a value and um, something that we really do recognise. Thank you, Sarah. That was uh, uh, excellent. Uh, um, Matt, anything you want to add? I don't that okay. A lot of work gone, gone on uh, to get to this point and uh, you know there are some, um, it's a good assessment but it shows some actions for where we need to still do more. We always recognise that. There's always room for improvement. and some, some positives in there as well, lots of positives. Colleagues, anybody want to uh, add anything? Yeah, Great, Richard. Just to say, it's really, really impressive to hear of the work that's that's going on and, and really key to our social justice agenda. Um, you know, some some children in this county do have, have difficult family backgrounds, and and the, the fact that they're they're getting all this additional support in in the community is, is making make a real difference for them. So yeah. it's fantastic to hear. Okay, right, so um, we'll just run through those recommendations again quickly. 2-1 then, to approve the 2019 player sufficiency assessment and the action plan for 2019-20. And to mandate the creating an active and healthy monastery partnership. That's a helpful one. Uh, young people subgroup, um, the play strategy group to seek to progress the key actions identified in the action plan. Are you all in favour of those? Great, thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, this... Um, Go on to the next item and um, relatively straightforward one school budget finance forum proposed changes to membership richard john thank you leader well this is a fairly straightforward report where we're proposing some changes to the membership of our school budget forum it's a really important consultative body um, that a, a number of councillors sit on but we also have a lot of expertise from from the the schools them, themselves and the School Budget Forum plays a really important role in scrutinising decisions made here about school funding. But they've also made some strong representations to the Welsh Assembly in the past two years about the level of funding that Monmouthshire receives from, from the Welsh Government, not just in our, in our block grant, but also in terms of the, the percentage of grants we get in, in terms of the Pupil Development Grants and the Education Improvement Grant. They've made some really strong strong representation. So it's it's a really important body. Um, and we're proposing some some changes to the, the numbers of, of members. We've currently got one trade union representative from the NASUWT who sits on the on, on the body. And we're proposing to uh, add an additional trade union representative. And we're also proposing to add three rather than one as it says in the report, an additional three um, school members. So we're proposing one primary school governor, one secondary school governor and one business manager to uh, add to the expertise that we've all already got on the um, on the school budget forum. So I, I should clarify the, the wording of that recommendation in 2.1 that Cabinet agreed to increase the membership of the school budget forum by four members. So that will be three school and one non-school member. Yeah, that's uh, pretty straightforward. Nick, anything you want to add? Okay, so um, well, I'm assuming that's you know that's the number which the forum feel is yeah. the, the right shape to go forward, and it is a really important uh, group. I remember chairing it myself many, many moons ago, um, and uh, yeah, it's key in shaping things like the funding 
uh, formula within our schools. We've done that uh, with that body in the past. So absolutely, if that's what they say they need, that's what we should agree. So a recommendation in the members. Anybody want to say anything on that? No. So the recommendation is in 2-1, as Richard read out, the council <coughs> agree to increase the membership of the school budget forum by four members, one three school and one non-school in the union additional rep. Okay, all in favour of that? That's it, great. Thank you, Nikki. And that brings us to the end of the cabinet meeting today. So um, I, I reckon it's about 20 minutes. But, uh, okay. Uh, I think we're, we're on a more serious note, you know, then we wouldn't probably get.